So today we're going to talk about wild pigs. Uh, we're going to cover a couple different topics. We're going to talk about their distribution and damage across the state. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about their biology and their environmental impact. Then we're going to get into some of the, the laws around wild pigs here in the state of Texas. And then we're going to talk about their reduction methods. So here we have two maps on your left, my right. Uh, we have feral swine population in 1982 by county across the whole U.S. As you can see, they were mostly, uh, mostly down in the southeastern portion of the U.S. and then off in California. You fast forward about 40 years to 2021, and they've, ta they've taken over the entire southeastern portion of the U.S. and all of California, slowly making their way north and pushing west out of California. To drive that home a little bit, here's a close-up map of Texas from 1982 to 2019, where 99% of Texas counties are, uh, have a, a population of wild pigs. Can anyone guess what county that is that doesn't have wild pigs? El Paso County. So currently research suggests that there's an estimated population of about 2.6 million pigs in the state of Texas. It is actually no one's job in the state of Texas or in the federal government to count, the, count pigs. In fact, it's uh, probably about impossible to accurately count uh, the number of pigs. This number comes from our best guess through the best research we have available, whether that be through camera, tra camera traps, uh, population estimates, things like that from universities, mainly along that southeastern portion of the U.S. on that map we saw. Uh, so universities such as Texas A&M, University of Texas, universities in Georgia, South Carolina, Louisiana, just about every university along that southeastern portion of the U.S. is doing some kind of research on wild pigs. So just focusing on agricultural damage alone, uh, has anyone heard the $52 million number? So $52 million was a pretty, uh, pretty well-known number back in 2012, which was the amount of damage done annually by wild pigs just to agriculture in the state of Texas. That number has skyrocketed with annual wild pig damages in Texas being conservatively estimated at 500 million as of 2022. That's just agriculture. That doesn't include natural resources, that doesn't include wildlife, and that doesn't include personal and private property. Now, Match that with landowners spending $7 million annually on wild pig control and damage mitigation. Does anyone think that those numbers don't quite match up? Does anyone have a guess why? Landowners tend to be somewhat bad at reporting how much money they're actually spending on wild pig control and mitigation. So you talk to a landowner and more often than not, you ask them, how much money did you spend on wild pigs this year? And they'll be like, well, I went out and bought a trap. The trap was, let's say $1,000. So I spent $1,000 this year. Well, did you, did you bait the trap? Did you go and check the trap? Did you shoot any of those pigs? How much is your time worth? How much was that bait worth? How much was the fuel in your truck to go back and forth to check in that trap? Did they damage anything? How much was the fuel you used to fix that damage? All those little things go into that, but oftentimes landowners don't have the time to really sit down and put all of that together to come up with the number that truly represents how much they're spending in uh, control and damage mitigation.
And again, this is another example. A lot of times when you ask landowners how much they lost, they'll say, they'll just tell you how much they could have sold that uh, bale for, not how much time and effort and money went into producing that bale, which also goes into the amount of money wild pigs cost them. It's always pretty amazing to me how fast they can tear that up. And then again, I always add this picture in there because that $500 million number is solely on agricultural damage. So it doesn't include things such as hitting a pig, going down the road in your personal vehicle. And I can tell you it's not fun to do. So population boom. Part of the reason why in the 40 years they were able to take over Texas and most of the southeastern portion of the United States is because they reach maturity quickly. Female, general rule of thumb is at a year. One year, sows and boars are sexually mature. But research, research shows us that females as soon as six months can start dropping litters. They have short gestation periods, 115 days. Easy way to remember that, three months, three weeks, three days. That means that tw perfect conditions, twice a year, a little bit more than twice a year, they can have litters. They have no defined mating season. So unlike, let's say, deer, where you know there's a certain window of time every year that they're going to mate, get bred, and have a, have a fawn, pigs don't have that all year round. As long as conditions are right and they have the ability to, they can be bred, they can have a litter, they can wean that litter and be bred again. They have very few predators. What's one thing we as uh, people did very well as we moved west across the U.S., we killed all the predators. Anything that could possibly have taken down a wild pig, we were very quick to get rid of. So now what's really their only predator on the landscape? People, us. And what's one thing, and we'll get into a little bit er a little bit later, but we all need sleep. And that becomes a problem, especially here in Texas, in the heat. And they have easy access to feed meant for wildlife and livestock. And they all need water. They lack sweat glands, so they accomplish their thermoregulation through wallowing, occupying shaded areas, and nocturnal feeding. And that's, that's where I got into, uh, especially here in Texas, where it gets so hot for such long periods of time. You know, we have about 10-month summers. Uh, they go nocturnal, we're their only predator. We like to sleep, especially as landowners, ranchers, farmers. You have so many things to do in the day, the last thing you wanna do is stay up all night to shoot them or take care of them. It makes it harder and harder to control their population. This is a video taken off of uh, my coworker's property, just showing how fast they can uh, dig in and wallow up along the side of a tank or a pond. And a couple of examples of the damage they can do to riparian areas. How quickly they can destroy native grasses and native habitat for amphibians. So a couple of the water quality impacts we, we deal with is loss of those riparian areas, increased runoff and sedimentation, bacterial contamination, including E. coli, and then watershed impairment. 